We are going to do a tint retouch on gray hair. To prepare the table after washing your hands, you would need a towel and an SMA, which is the sanitary maintenance area, and all your clean implements that are going to touch your client should go on sanitary maintenance area. You need a red tail comb to separate the hair and four clips, gloves to protect yourself, protective cream, a long cape for client protection. The bowl is optional. There are two methods to apply hair color, bowl and brush method and an applicator bottle method. I have 611 6N which is like a neutral N which covers gray really good and I have a peroxide. This cream developer is 40 volume but I'm going to make 20 volume out of it. We're going to drape the client with two towels. Two towels are necessary to protect the client. According to State Board of Cosmetology, it's called double draping. You should hold the plastic cape, bring it to the front face under the chin of the client, hold your hands in between the client's neck and the cape and attach. Always periodically extend the cape over the back of the chair. In order to mix the color, I'm going to follow the manufacturer's instructions. The manufacturer's instructions are usually inside of the box. Now read the manufacturer's instructions. I know that for Wella color, which is the color charm permanent color, the manufacturer's instructions indicate to mix one ounce of color to two ounces of hydrogen peroxide. This one contains almost one and a half ounces of color, so I'm going to add three ounces of hydrogen peroxide. Usually I use 20 volume of developer, but I have 40 volume of developer right now. I need 20 volume of developer. To mix 20 volume out of 40 volume of developer, I would need the developer, one and a half ounce, and then equal amount of water to make three ounces of developer. So now, now I make three ounces 20 volume developer. Mix the entire color into 3 ounces uh, and 20 volume developer, which will make 4.5 ounces of color. 1 to 2 ratio. Section the client's hair. Do not use a metal clip because the color, the chemical inside of the color, which is the aniline derivative tint will get into reaction with the metal. For client's protection, we are going to apply protective cream around the hairline. I can go in with my finger because I am going to throw this whole thing away. If this was in a container, then we were going to remove the protective cream out of the container using a spatula cover the top of the container and throw away the spatula. The protective cream should go all around the hairline, over the ears and the back. Apply the color from the scalp to the line of demarcation where the rigor ends and the old color is still visible. To do that I'm going to first do the outline simply by applying the color and using my finger to apply and then when I'm done I'm going to come forward and do the front line. Usually the front area is the most resistant area. Some clients always complain that the front area does not take. I usually do the front area like this, finish my color application and then go back and then apply it on the front area again. Some people use the end of the brush to open up the sections. I'm going to use the end of my bottle to open up the sections. The subsection should be as thin as possible for the client's hair. So you open it up, put it on the side, apply the color and use your fingers to separate. After you finish this color application, you should not bunch up the hair like so. 
you should bring the hair down and let it breathe because the color needs air to oxidize. Check the front hairline of the client and clean the color as you are applying the color from the front hairline because you don't want your clients to go home with bruises. They're not bruises but they're color stains which look like bruises. Now we're moving to the fourth section of the client's hair of retouching. You should not overlap the color. Like this is the new growth and here's the old color. You should not overlap the new color otherwise you will end up with a band of color this area darker. Remember color over color makes a dark color. Doesn't matter if you put blonde over blonde or you put black over black, any color over color makes a darker color. Notice that I'm putting the hair on this side now because I don't want to put this hair on the colored hair otherwise that part would get a new color. We're going to wait for 35 minutes for the roots to develop and then we will do the ends. One common mistake of the people who color their hair themselves is that they put the color on the entire hair instead of putting it on the roots only and that's why the hair ends get dark because you have to wait 35 minutes on your roots before touching up the colored hair to refresh it. It's time for the soap cap. I have the color left over. I'm going to add shampoo to it because by adding shampoo I'm diluting the color. Remember, the hair color aniline derivative tint has 45 minutes of life, active life, after opening or activating. But it's still strong for the ends, so I'm going to mix it with shampoo to apply it on the ends. I'm going to apply it on the ends only. You can wash it with your hands. Don't worry about oxidation or opening the hair. At this point, it doesn't matter. We're just refreshing the color. This is the leftover color and we're doing a soap cap. But you can also do a soap cap or a glaze using a demi-permanent color. So permanent color on the roots and a glaze to freshen up this color, demi-permanent color. After this, after five minutes, the client going, is going to wash her hair and then we're going to style. Here's the color result after washing. The color is distributed evenly because we did the roots first, waited for 35 minutes and then did the ends.